Hello, hello and guten tag, mein Freunde! I'm Peter and here I'm telling you stories about the most interesting European cars of the 80s and 90s. Today we are talking about a car that was a good and highly capable competitor of BMW M7 and Mercedes-Benz W140 S600, Audi S8. But before we start, I really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button below, it really helps to develop the channel and make more videos. Thank you so much, and let's get back to the car. In the 70s and 80s, in Germany there were only two companies famous for their luxury cars, Mercedes-Benz and BMW. Porsche at that time was known for sports cars only, so it wasn't a competitor. But Volkswagen Group wanted to join this party and they decided to use the brand Audi owned by them for this purpose. The first attempt was Audi 200, produced from 1979 to 1991 in two generations. Basically, it was just a top trim level of the Audi 100, known as Audi 5000 in the United States. The car was slower and less luxurious than Mercedes and BMW and wasn't a real competitor to them. But it had an all-wheel drive system quattro, famous for the rally championship. In 1988, Audi launched the next level of a luxury sedan on the same platform, with a new V8 engine. It was called Audi V8. You may see that Audi didn't bother with creative names at that time. The car wasn't bad, it was rather powerful but still slower than competitors. The interior and equipment were luxurious, but the customers still prefer BMW and Mercedes, even though Audi V8 was the only luxury sedan with all-wheel drive. Audi and Volkswagen needed to make something revolutionary to really take their place at the table of large luxury executive cars. And in 1994, such a revolution happened with the appearance of the first generation of Audi A8 with the model index D2. Audi A8 was the first mass production car with a body fully made of aluminum. Aston Martin of course made aluminum cars before, but they always were hand-built low-quantity cars. So, the first aluminum car that was produced in tens of thousands was Audi A8. Why did they do this? First of all, to decrease the weight. They wanted the car to be fast, faster than BMW. But the Quattro Drive added almost 400 pounds to the car, and Audi needed to save the weight somehow. The second reason, Volkswagen expected to sell a large part of these cars in countries with cold climate and salty roads in winter, such as Germany, Norway or Russia. The aluminum body didn't rust and it was very solid and strong thanks to the space frame integrated into the body. On top of all this, it was just really cool. Audi even showed a car that wasn't painted on various shows, it was just polished mirror-like aluminum. The car got great appreciation and demand from the customers, but Volkswagen and Audi needed something more to show a final finger to their German rivals. So, in 1996 they launched a performance version of Audi A8, under the name Audi S8. This car is being produced until today, and we have the fourth generation already. The first one, today we speak about this only, is known as Audi S8 G2 and was made from 1996 to 2003 with an update in 1999. The second generation, G3, was produced from 2006 to 2010. The third, G4, from 2012 to 2015. And the current, fourth generation, G5, was launched in 2019 and still is in production. But let's get back to the first generation of the S8. The Audi S8 wasn't very different from A8 in exterior or interior appearance. The body was completely the same. But while A8 was available in the long and short base versions, the S8 was made on the short wheel base only. This was a car for a driver and not for a passenger with a chauffeur, although there was enough space on the rear seat anyway. Visually, you can distinguish the S8 from A8 by side mirrors. They are aluminum on the S8, and it is real polished aluminum, not just painted plastic. Also, it has a slightly different front grille and an S8 badge on the same front grille and on the trunk. Some of the cars have a sportive suspension, and they may look lower than A8, but not all of them. It was an option, not a standard feature, at least in Europe. The most interesting and distinctive thing in this car was under the hood and there was a 4.2 liter naturally aspirated V8. Audi A8 also had the V8 engine of the same size, and actually it was the same engine block. But S8 had a different aluminum engine head, and this made it more powerful and faster than A8. At the launch S8 had 335 horsepower instead of 296 for A8, 
it was very decent power for a car of 3800 pounds. S8 could make 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.6 seconds with manual transmission and 6.8 seconds with the automatic one. The top speed was electronically limited to 249 km per hour or 155 miles per hour. In 1999 Audi updated the cylinder head of the S8, now using 5 valves per cylinder instead of 4 before. This and other updates resulted in increasing the engine power to 355 horsepower and 0 to 60 miles in 5.4 seconds now with manual transmission instead of 5.6. Frankly speaking, I don't think that it was a huge difference, but the customers approved. By the way, it wasn't the most powerful engine available for this body. In 2001 and 2002, Audi produced the A8 with a W12 engine making 414 horsepower. This is an interesting engine because its cylinders are placed in a zigzag pattern, a solution first applied by Volkswagen in the Carrade VR6. This engine was never used in the S8, but actually S8 with its V8 engine was faster than A8 with 12 cylinders because of the difference in weight. S8, as I said, could make 0 to 60 in 5.4 seconds, and A8 with W12 only in 5.8 seconds. The top speed of all those cars was the same, limited at 155 miles per hour. The S8 was available with 6-speed manual transmission or 5-speed automatic transmission. In some countries, like in the UK, only automatic one was available. The standard option for continental Europe was the manual gearbox, but most of the customers preferred the automatic transmission. They lost because the manual one was really good and the cars with it are more valuable now. Well, Audi made great manual transmissions in the 90s for all its cars. I used to have Audi 80 with a stick 20 years ago, and I still remember how sharp and satisfying the process of changing gears in that car was. All assets were equipped with quadro or wheel drive system. It was a huge advantage over competitors, particularly in Northern and Eastern Europe in winter. With that power and very predictable all-wheel drive, it could be a real rally car staying extremely comfortable at the same time. The interior of the S8 was flawless. Audi installed the updated sportive seats in this car, replacing the ones that caused concerns in Audi A8. Owners called the seats in the S8 probably the most comfortable seats ever, with a very high quality of the leader on top of that. You can still find S8s of 1996 with 300,000 miles on them and the perfect condition of the seats. It was very quiet inside, thanks to good insulation and double glass of side windows sandwiched together. The same solution was applied on Mercedes-Benz W140. The car had a lot of equipment. Of course, great sound. Of course, all electronically operated, windows, seats, rear sunshade, etc. A telephone in a car wasn't a rare thing for luxury sedans of that time, and for sure S8 had it. But the navigation system was something new on the market, and S8 had it as an option, as well as an optional LCD dashboard display after the upgrade of 1999. It also had a unique option, a sunroof with built-in solar panels that powered the climate system during parking time. So, when you come to the car parked under the hot summer sun, it meets you with a cool air inside and cooled seats. And we speak about a car from the mid-90s. On top of this, it was very spacious for the driver and passengers on both rows of seats. And it had a huge trunk. But what about driving experience? Oh, it was really great! The word that I hear from many owners is friendly. With all this power, dynamics and speed, the S8 was not intimidating at all. It handled corners perfectly. Probably it had a tendency to understeer because the engine was far in the front, but it was compensated by four-wheel drive and flawless suspension. The brakes were a little soft by feeling, but they stopped the car exactly when and where you need it. Maybe it didn't give you a thrill on driving emotions which you could get in the Ferrari 40 or the original Audi Quattro, but if you wanted to drive fast with the highest comfort, Audi S8 was the right choice. This car could make you the fastest one on the curvy winter road and make you feel in a high-end luxury resort at the same time. So, it was a very comfortable and convenient car with many luxury options, and it was bloody fast even by today's standards. What else do you need? Probably something Hollywood-style famous? Well, the S8 was famous, and it played one of the leading roles in a very good movie Ronin of 1998, together with Robert De Niro and Jean Reno. This movie is famous for its car chases, and Audi S8 showed its capabilities there in full. 
It's interesting that the first generation of the Audi S8 wasn't sold in the United States until 2001. So, if you want one in the US, you cannot find one from the 90s locally, and you are limited by automatic transmission only. But what to do if you want a genuine early series S8 with a manual transmission? Well, you can import one from Europe, because many of them are older than 25 years now. And by the way, it may be a very good decision, because many of these cars are still in very good condition despite of their age. They have an aluminum body, so you don't need to worry about rust in most cases. The naturally aspirated V8 engines of the S8 are proved to be one of the most reliable Audi engines ever, as well as quarter drive trains. You may see cars with 300 or 400 thousand miles still on the road, but there are many of them with lower mileage too, of course. So you probably can find a really good car for reasonable money. In the UK, you can become the Lord of the Rings for 5 to 9 thousand British pounds. In continental Europe, you will pay from 6 to 25 thousand euros depending on the condition of the car. If you are lucky, you can find one with a manual transmission. Just make sure that it is older than 25 years to be able to import it to the United States. Of course, you may find better offers if you search deeper and have someone with good connections in Europe. And by the way, if you'd like to buy the Audi S8 or any other car from Europe and import it to the United States, I probably can help you with this. Check out our website for all details by the link in the description under this video. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you had an Audi S8 of any generation, please tell me about your experience with this car in the comments below. Did you have an opportunity to compare the S8 to A8? It's really interesting to learn a real life experience from the owners of cars. And if you like this video, please give me thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. New interesting stories are coming soon. Danke schon, mein Freunde, and see you next time.